Good afternoon and welcome to Aurora Stadium for Sunday football, round 15 action between Hawthorne and Adelaide. The Crows in second position playing the Hawks in second last position. Will the Adelaide team get up and put another notch in the, on the gun holster there today? Let's welcome a state of origin South Australian player, Dwayne Russell. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure to be here. And that looked like something, like some sort of painting, that picture there that we had Beautiful. on the screen. It is magnificent, the conditions for football here at Aurora Stadium this afternoon. And the Adelaide Crows have been playing magnificent football. There's Hawthorne running through the banner as we speak. A late change for them. John Barker not playing and Jared Ruffhead has come in. And a late change for Adelaide as well. Hayden Skipworth out, but Chris Knights comes in for his first game. He was an emergency last week. He's from Vermont. And uh, he is also an Eastern under-18 player. Mark Rusciuto leading his team out onto the ground there. Won five of its last six games. And look, they are sitting equal second at the moment with a win today. They can go to outright second on the ladder a position. None of us thought they would occupy no. at the start of this season. We all thought there was a bit of a slide mm. coming up for them, but they have been magnificent. And the coach, Neil Craig, has turned around a few new players, got a few into uh, new spots and released some of the older heads mm. to uh, enviable spots on the ground. Mark Rusciuto, none the least. Let's go down to... Alistair Clarkson now, he is with Michael Roberts. Al, uh, gee, Adelaide, this is their best start to a season ever. You've just got to sort of find a way to win today. Yeah, geez, they're in good nick, the Crows, aren't they? You know, they're going to surprise a lot of people in the footy industry, but uh, they haven't surprised me. I looked at Adelaide pretty closely over the last couple of years, haven't lived there, and uh, they've got some super players. And with Hart and Goodwin having full seasons for them this year, you know, they're a formidable unit, and we'll have to play their best to beat them. They're quick out of the blocks in the first quarter. You, uh, by statistics, are uh, proven slow starters. You've got to make a statement today. Yeah, that's right. Our last five games, we've uh, we've lost the first quarters, and uh, I think statistics will show you that uh, if you don't win the first quarter, you're you're a fair chance of losing the game, and uh, yeah, we we need to get a, off to a good start against a side like this because if they get uh, get ahead of us, they're so hard to catch up to. So, um, yeah, we've uh, we've had to play a lot of catch up footy this year because of our poor start. So it's uh, really important for us today. Nick Holland uh, bagged his selection bag. The club. I've got to ask you how much attention's been taken away uh, for preparing today. Oh, none at all, really. But uh, we'll we'll deal with that during the week. I mean, we don't. I don't even really know the context of how it was said and. Uh, yeah, Nick's been a decorated player for our footy club, so I'd be surprised if he was uh, too critical of the process that we're going through. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that during the week. Good luck today, Al. Thanks for watching. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, they're a very good starting team, Adelaide. And Hawthorne gets scored, outscored three goals to one in the opening quarter. That could be on their medal. Let's have a look at the team here. Still some balance there. Some very good players, some superstar players in that Hawthorne lineup, but as well, they've blooded seven first gamers this year, Hawthorne, and that means that they haven't got that experience to drag them over the line in big moments in big games. Campbell Brown makes his way back into the team after a late night indiscretion. Luke Hodge also after yeah. a 36-hour uh, indiscretion. Went pretty hard at it, the boy. But one thing about the Hawks you'd have to say is they are leading in so many vital statistics of the competition. Uh, the number ones, Mark Williams leads for the uh, goal-kicking competition, notwithstanding he's only kicked five in the last three games. Spider Everett still is arguably the best ruckman in the game. Sam Mitchell is the number one clearance player in the game, and Daylight is coming second. And Shane Crawford is the number one uncontested player in the comp. So, look, they have got all these number one players mm. in the various areas, but they still can't win games. Yes, a lot of number ones, but they've been playing like number twos in most games. There's the Adelaide lineup, and as we said, a late change. Skipworth out of the team and Chris Knights comes into his first game and you only have to look at uh, a guy like Ian Perry who is the leading goal kicker in that Adelaide team that we're looking at right now starting on the bench they have got a good unit of players didn't start last week as well but there's a bit of a changing of the guard when you look at it with Shirley Thompson and now Marty Matner they're their ball winners along with Hudson who's a uh, contested ball winner but and that releases the likes of Mark Rusciuto are we going to argue that his season has been better this year Good timing, timekeeper, behind us with the siren there. 2003 is when he won the Brownlow. He had 24 disposals on average per game. He's only one down this year. Couple of extra marks because he's released into space now. Clearances are down because he's playing a little bit more on the outside. Inside 50s, he's up by two. And that's because he's running forward into yeah. space and they're feeding him off to him. He's had less game time, but that is to do with 
allowing him recovery time off the ground. He strategically comes yeah. off with eight minutes to go. And Adelaide's won more games for this time of this season than they had in 2003 as well. We don't need a coffee now. That Siren's waking us up. Let's Ab go. Absolutely. Cleared out the cobwebs. That man on screen, one of the all-time greats. Worth the price of admission just to come and watch him by himself. But in round 10 last year, did he turn on some magic? Can he do it today? We'll find out after the break on Sunday Football. To McLeod, McLeod's got it. Oh, brilliantly done. Andrew McLeod, what can he muster here? Oh, don't tell me. What a goal from Andrew McLeod. Hawks flying all over the place. Well, coming to you from Aurora Stadium, Hawthorne have won the toss. They will kick to the left-hand side of your screen. Proceedings about to get underway. Good afternoon to cool rockin' Dennis Cometti. As always, Derm, a sheer delight, a sheer delight. And that's it. <laughs> Away we go. Yes, it is. Opening bounce on Sunday football. Great sunny conditions, albeit pretty chilly. Hudson was in there. Shirley digs it out. Matna thought about the hand pass to Doughty. Now goes to Hart. Smothered off the boot. Moved at about 15 metres. Sliding in down there was Van Burlo. Hand passes it forward. Smith gets a hand pass away to Vandenberg. Sends it well inside the forward 50. Rutten goes back and does well. Plays on immediately. Burton in the pocket. Sends play towards the outer side. Goodwin. Doesn't break stride. Looks down towards half forward. McGregor moves for him. Kick goes in that direction. And he judged it very well. Ken McGregor in pretty good form. Kicks inside the 50. Too short. And the mark is taken in front by Brown. Back in the side this afternoon. Into the path of Brennan. Runs out of defence, kicks it beyond the wing then. Crowd starting on the forward line, close to the boundary line. In fact, he's crossed the boundary line involuntarily. Wearing a flak jacket. Boundary well, throw in. The last time we were down here with Hawthorne, we saw Crowd go forward in the last quarter and do very well. Gave them a target. We started with a four-man forward line, Hawthorne. His two teams have only played here once and Hawthorne won it. So, good time to rattle up the stats that make Hawthorne look like they could be competitive this afternoon. Smith to Leck. It's good to see him back in the lineup. Long kick from his boot inside 50. Williams, one grab, not the second. Paddles it, kicks around the body, and it's way out of bounds on the full. And he hasn't had a good run of it. Still leading the race for the Coleman, but only five goals in the last three games, two last week. Only 11 in the last four weeks, so there was a six back there five weeks ago for him. My man's got the job too, Nathan Bassett. That surprises me. I would have thought Hart would have gone to Williams. I think he's been so good at clearances out of 50, gives them their run. I think they want to keep the structure going, so Bassett's the uh, one they'll throw deeper into defence. Good one. Short. Doughty takes the half volley, so what you're saying is more responsibility for Bassett. Yes. Edwards swings it wide. That's what we like to see. Burton gets a hand pass Does away. They work it forward. Yes, Hart to the wing. Rusciuto. Woodmark wants to go now, runners alongside, McLeod to the centre circle, run down from behind by Joel smith Henschel. thought he was pushed to the back, no free, they struggle after the football, and that's holding it. They fell forward in the tackle, but what actually happened there was Brennan, uh, Johnny Hayes, exceptionally quick, turns him and he lands on his side, which saved Johnny Hay. I'm just telling you what saved him from the free then. He took off. <laughs> he jumped into his back. Bleeding anyway, from the mouth as well. He is. Not a good kick either. Almost the one-hander there to Hart. A scramble develops, and the umpire will ball it up this time. The umpires this afternoon, Davis Quigley and Nichols. Didn't swallow that blood or lick his lips quickly enough, and he will come off. Michael Roberts on the boundary. Yeah, I reckon that the sun could be a bit of a problem today, boys. A big fireball up there, but I tell you what, this surface, uh, just talking to Shane Crawford, said it's the best surface he's ever played in. And don't forget, in 1920, this place used to be a tip. And I tell you what, the grandstand that you're sitting in is being pulled down tomorrow, uh, all part of a $20 million development, so you could be sitting in a cherry picker next year. Let's <laughs> hope the, the game doesn't go late. McLeod rolls it towards half <laughs> forward. Little chip kick is pretty good to Mitchell. Got on the end of it from Sewell. That's and he kick. spears it to half forward. Mark drop. Chance here for Osmond. Spun out of trouble. Short and finds the spider just inside 50. Now, how long it can keep going? That is the question. But you've already seen that 
a longer ground. Hawthorne a short possession team. They do play down here well because they're a short possession team. And on a longer ground, there's more space, obviously, between the lines for them to pick out the target. Best and fairest last year ever. Best club man last year as well. And it's marked on the line. Dixon will have a shot. Well, Adelaide looked like they had the numbers back there to spoil. The kick deceptively short. Not sure who ever it came in with the big run. Yeah. Brett Burton just cleared a path for Ben Dixon. This is a kick that should be easy, even though yep. it kind of looks tough. It's it's a simple kick for a league play. Just got to get a lot of elevation straight up. Should be the first goal of the afternoon. He hits the post. No need to run around. It's a drop punt from there, and it is a lot of ele elevation. Punch through it, and you've got to almost sky the ball. He kicked 206 goals in his 116 games, and it wasn't that hard. Your two apprentices are coming along very nicely. Here's Edwards, <laughs> left half back, twisting, turning, Doughty, now Burton. Looping hand pass, Rutten a long way up the ground, runs beyond the wing, kicks towards half forward, plenty of hawks around the football, but Henschel amongst them, Rusciuto goes out wide, Goodwood inside the 50, lines up, question of accuracy, he's got it in spades. Lovely kick by the champ. Form, 23 possessions last week. Ball back in the middle, Everett down to Crawford, beautiful palm down, the ex-captain inside, 50, Hart down there with Dixon trying to make amends, Clark was there, just overran it slightly, Van Berlo, shuffled a handball out, hoping it was out of the danger zone, Doughty, half-back flank, Hart lurking, ball almost out, is taken out by Richie Vandenberg and will get a ball in on attacking 50 for the Hawks. Luke Hodge back this afternoon. That should be interesting. Thompson's been in good form. Big assignment for Sewell. Hudson knocks it down. Over the football is Mitchell. And the ball does not come out. Adelaide lead it by five. And with Johnny Hay on the boundary line getting fixed up. Trent Crowe's had to go back and pick up Rhett Biglins. Hudson, in fact, beaten by Everett. Fell behind. Matna, Rusciuto. Hart, now Burton, Bassett, across half back, goes long towards half forward, getting across on the angle is McGregor, well played Crowe, pushed him off the line, taken down by McGregor, it stayed in, Thompson around the corner, into the path of Shirley, right on the 50, concedes some ground, back to McGregor, they've got the numbers there, McGregor, Bacon Square, getting back is Brown, right on the line, bounces off the cross buckle and away he comes. Looks up, sees Dixon, who's a long way from that goalpost. Chips the ball. Clark's got it. Also been in good form for the Hawks. Hodge. A little bit of class, I was about to say, but the kick was a shocker. Gave it the oops, Dennis. Yeah, gave it the oops. Bop to Goodwin, to Hart, towards Biglands. Just bounced inside the boundary line, but the big man couldn't keep it alive, and we will get a ball in. Red Biglands at AFL, please explain for his comment last week the Crows are playing against 22 plus 4 against Fremantle. I'm not too sure where he got the plus 4 from if he was talking about the umpires. Maybe he dislikes the emergency just as much. <laughs> from this ball up. Clark's in the middle of it. Van Berlo, Shirley, Doughty looped it over the top. They might get away with it. Vandenberg couldn't quite trap it. Biglins has trapped him. He's dragged it under him, calling for ball. I might have to sort this that, out for the bounce. That was clever by Red Biglins because Vandenberg tried to push it away, but then Red Biglins pulls the ball back to him, and it looked like right, that's gone away, and there's Biglins dragging in. That was clever. I think Biglins included number 15, the umpire in the foreground there. <laughs> this week, he got ahead of himself. He knew that he wasn't going to get a holding the ball. That's Matthew Nichols. Forward planning. There's Rashido on the mark as... Hodge gets a free, swings it right across the ground. Campbell Brown's away. Jacobs to Brown, nobody near him. Runs to the wing, in fact, elects to hand pass. Joel Smith stops, gets up on his toes, bouncing around, goes back to Brown. The momentum suddenly lost. Brown, very wide. Crawford, just inside the boundary line. Looks back towards the middle, told to play on. Not his best effort, scrambles a kick to Leckes. Bassett. Knocks it out of bounds. 
Angela Lekas, who had that minor stroke, played last week and was in very good form last week. 18 possessions and three goals. In fact, led the goal scoring for Hawthorne. Loney, Latson, Boyle and Mitchell. Sam Mitchell's just gone to the bench. We might find out from Robbo a second ago. Oh, he just went off a second ago. What's wrong with him? Thompson found Burton. White, McGregor, one grab, two. He gets played the mark in front of Danny Jacobs. Long way away from where he'd like to be. It's in a half forward. Just chips it up. Contest here. Good marks taken by Brennan. And he's away from half back. Long launch from his boot. He was hoping for Everett, but got nowhere near him. Mark taken by Hudson. McGregor. Now Burton. He threw his teammates out, Brennan, and then it came get back quickly. Burton kicks towards half forward. Good mark taken in front by Biglands. Big U turn, thought about going. Told to play on. Little chip pass to space. Matna, it's out of bounds. That was a lucky let off there for the Hawks. Burton, yeah. eight possessions already. He's saying they don't move it quickly enough. Oh, well, they just try to pick out um, pinpoint positioning, whereas Brennan took it on himself to keep the run of play going, and a forward instinctively can read play on play, but not on that occasion. Hodge sends a long kick towards half forward. Wide of the pack now. Opportunity for Crawford still inside the centre square. Good hand pass under pressure. Back to Joel Smith. Men moving towards half forward. A couple of them. And he pinpoints it nicely to Dixon. Dixon goes over the top. Clark goes in. Kicks the goal. Well done. Francis Prelot has played four. From the ball up. Lekas half tackled Rashido. Ball comes back to Clark. He pumps it inside 50. Down there, good marks taken by Crow, who started forward for the Hawks, as Dermot said. And a nice one-handed grab. Yeah, he had to go into the back line to cover, but obviously they have predetermined ideas that they need Crow at centre forward. With Johnny Barker not playing, it's been identified that they need somebody who's got games under the belt that knows where to run to get the footy. Like what is Nick Holland? <laughs> yes. 23 possessions last week, Trent. That, could come back. that does come back, and it does give Hawthorne a good start to this clash. To this stage, and Trent Crowe has been terrific since coming back from the Fremantle Dockers. Holding the ball, is it? Now push in the back. It's going to be a free kick. I think to Thompson in there. In fact, it's Goodwin. Comes up brandishing the football. Wants to go. Swings it out wide. Bock. From the wing, towards the half-forward line, ill-directed. Everett takes the mark on his chest in the bright sunshine. But that belies a cold day. Very brisk. So is this man, Crawford, pulls it back towards centre-half-forward. Up comes Williams, hand to it, couldn't hang on. Loose at the back, gathered by Ruffett. He in turn was gathered. Vandenberg, hand passes towards goal. Clark tried to thump it into the square, missed the football. Rutten was pushed in the back. Will he get a free kick? No. The umpire will go in and ball it up. You and, I, you and I have banged heads on that. I thought he did pretty well not to fall in his back there, uh, Mark Williams. Let's go down to Michael Roberts on the boundary. Thanks, Derm. Very fortunate to get into the surgery. Sam Mitchell's Ooh. had his uh, left boot taken off, and they're working on his foot and his ankle, so he hasn't come back out of the surgery yet. So uh, very important. The clearance king's still in the surgery with boot off, probably heavily strapped on that ankle. Hodge deemed to have half-ducked his head, didn't get a free kick for too high. The last bounce... 10 seconds ago here, no Ruckman went for it and again, no Ruckman got a hand on a Burton wide, Shirley tried to get it around the boundary line Hodge again, loops the hand with a crow, chips the kick to Lekas, not 15 spins it around the body and they've got their third Dean he played on immediately had the presence of mind to throw it on the boot and knew where the goals were very good in his comeback game last week. Continuing that form so far this afternoon. Beglins, Thompson. Well, Tawny was almost in the grasp before the ball arrived and we'll get another bounce. Swain, we saw Hawthorne like training run for the under-15s before the game out in the ground, practicing their tackling and already it's, we've seen that Hawthorne's tackling, holding the ball in. Once again, this is the Crows that applied that one initially. But Hawthorne's tackling has held the ball in the forward line. Well, they played 
almost a 10 minute quarter before the game started they did and it was all accented on tackling and the uh, the hard approach to the opposition body Peglin's knocked it down Lewis got it Thompson got him and that's before the game now this was a whole little mini two mini practice matches there was another one going on elsewhere and it's all about the tackling that's what we're seeing here at the moment there's a hold out there that was a confidence builder they won there's a free kick going to Biglands now. And a 50. Was that because of back chat? I believe so. Mm. Interesting situation, this back chat. I mean, we were talking about it this morning on the Sunday footy show. And I think the panel was divided. But if you're going to mic umpires up, then I think you've got to give 50. These umpires this afternoon are not mic'd up. So it's an unlevel playing field is what I'm saying there. Yeah, Everett's off the ground. Well, there's one way of fixing that. Make it uniform right throughout the comp. What, well, make them up? No. <laughs> well, one way or the other. No, just make it uniform. You can't back chat umpires. We're the only oh, footballing well, code that right. does it. We agree, you and I. Here's Biglands. Fires it go. That's a long boot. Through it goes. Or do what red pick specialist. Well, I don't think Oops has got application in that sentence. <laughs> And Trent Crade in the ruck here. I was saying earlier, he's off now, Everett. Best and fairest last year and best clubman, but overlooked as a captain. They didn't want him to have the captaincy. Maybe that's an indication <laughs> as to why. Sewell, long, they didn't think he was leadership material, obviously. Van Berlo, not paid oh. the mark. Tim Clark, drugs a tackle, going for goal number two, and oh. touched on the line. There's going to be a different dimension to this game now with Spider Everett having a break. Trent Crowe has an enormous vertical leap. As long as he can make a nil-all draw in the bounce down, his mobility around the ground for the next five minutes or so, I see a different complexion again come over the game. Hart, short one, good one, Bassett, up towards midfield. Nice bounce. He's been good, McGregor. Presenting a long way up the ground, though. Biglands, Doughty, Goodwin, moments ago had it in the back pocket, sends it long down towards full forward. In front, almost Thompson, knocked away by Smith. Chance for Hay, Henschel has it now. Taken down by Smith, and the umpire decides that's holding the ball. He's a bit stiff there. He's playing the footy. I mean, that's the rules we're working with him this season, but he's playing the footy. Smith. Short one to the pocket then, and Lekas has already kicked a wonderful goal. Has a couple of bounces. Not his best kick, though. Made it very difficult for Dixon. Rutten lays it off to Perry. Perry has started on the bench, back inside the forward 50 with pinpoint precision. And McGregor once more, who's been the focal point on the forward line, bearing in mind Welsh not playing this afternoon. They'll miss him. And Danny Jacobs playing on McGregor. And he just plays off him. Once this ball gets turned around, there is an, a lot of Hawthorne defenders inside defensive 50 then, but they were virtually zoning off expecting a long kick to the goal square rather than pressuring up their men like McGregor. Runs inside the 50, trying to work it back right to left. Burton, a big spring. We've got a whistle. Hawthorne free kick advantage play. Lekas looked up. He knew it was his. Everybody else waited to see Dixon, Jacobs, back into the middle, Crawford tried to manufacture some sort of handball twice, then ran overran it, that's not a good sign, McGregor caught by Crawford, who's an angry soldier now, Tawny caught, umpire says, free kick to Shane Crawford. The tackling's been good by Hawthorne, and not very high in the tackle count this season if you look at all the lists. But their tackling has been exceptional. Yeah, he's as fresh airy then. Bit like he's acting in bullet and gun, both those attempts at the ball. Lewis. Oh, what's that mean? Crow. Not as good as yours. From 55, <laughs> loads up, long towards full foot, getting back and taking a good mark, Ben Rutten. <laughs> There's no acting involved. <laughs> <laughs> Magna. Danes a hand pass. Goes wide with it now. Bassett pushes up towards left half back. Sends it long towards the wing in front of McGregor. Fisted away by Jacobs and out of bounds it goes. Hawthorne lead it by eight points. Approaching quarter time on Sunday football. 
be a moral victory here for the Hawks and that will give them some impetus to go in at quarter time if they can come away with a lead at quarter time Spider Everett getting set to come back on the breeze not a factor just a gentle zephyr going right to left but nothing to speak of Rusciuto out wide Goodwin and plenty of it high ball back to the oh. 50 Brennan he, he has a spring heel this kid and I've seen him hasn't put it together in a match yet but I've seen him take some of well if you can take an all-time great market training he does it <laughs> I used it there goes the ball up towards the wing or at least I say I did Everett's got it we believe he did bit of Jim Sewell about Brennan remember Jimmy Sewell yeah, number could, two he could jump Here's an opportunity for Ladson. Tough kick ahead. Yes, right on the boundary line. Sandwich between Burton and Tawney. Only Tawney was the one playing. Bassett swung, didn't have the football umpire. What are you doing? Down goes Clark. Our man Bassett was just thrown away like a rag doll. We've got a ball up down towards center half forward. Oh, the little hand help. Yeah. That was like Ablett's mark of the year. It didn't really hold it. Yeah, no, he didn't. It was arguable whether he got clear grab on it but when you leap like that and sort of bring it down you got to get it paid i tell you what it was an enormous vertical elevation mm -hmm. though so and you think he's more like sewell than sewell is like sewell that's Dennis. right yes he is these days well as sewell took a specky against the saints a couple of weeks ago didn't he dowdy kick smothered mm -hmm. speak of the devil there is brad sewell <laughs> like he doesn't look like the sewell dennis is talking about to Lekas, who looks like a good footballer back in form Full forward, off hands, rotten caught, and just rushed through. And we are behind. I'm going to say too, Mark Williams has been still getting on the lead, but many, many times they are electing to go long over his head to Spider Everett. Now that's all right. They need to break it up occasionally, though. So the chasing defender still is committed to the lead. Hudson's got the football, and you reckon that doesn't take a bit of organising? getting Sewell to get the next kick after we speak about it. <laughs> Here's Hudson from half back up towards the wing. Perry had it knocked away by the Spring Hill Jack. Brennan, hand pass comes across from Perry to Riley, goes towards the pocket. Awkward one for McGregor, beat him. Now Smith at the back, looks across the ground, nothing much on. He's looking Brown. for Ladson way up. Trying to shepherd there, Brown bought him some time and he found Ladson as a result. Well done by Campbell Brown. Here's Ladson, pulls it back across the body, wide of Vandenberg though. McLeod clatters into Vandenberg. They went to ground. And McLeod it is who's going to get the free kick. Interesting. Now, I think Richie sensed he was going to be pushed off the ball here. So, uh, there he oh, was. There and that's where Vandenberg thinks, well, I'm taking you to the ground with me. Good umpiring. The boundary throw-in is on the outer side now. McLeod hasn't been in the action all too much. He's oh, a good hit on Richie. Oh, yeah. And shoulder into the head. They put them in the memory bank. Three possessions for McLeod. We've got to throw in on the other side. You had a good memory bank too, Dermot, I must say. <laughs> a lot of players have got one as large as yours with as good a highlighters on them. We'll get another ball up. No, but I mean, the way he did that, watch him, yeah. he works him off the ball first within the laws of the game. From the ball up, he'll get the all-important takeaway. Inside, two minutes to quarter time. Smith got the handball out to Loney. Through traffic again. Wobbly kick, though, this time, and it's been marked. Ben, ben Hart is allowing Benny Dixon a fair bit of latitude here. Dixon loads up, goes long. Williams and Everett both there inside 50. Ball knocked down to Brennan. Got the arms free, knew the contact was coming. Loney's a long kick of the ball. And an accurate one. square he wants this one to run on going back is hard it does run on and it misses well you can see the process ever got the footy looked downfield there was nobody back within 30 meters of the goal and he kicked his runner once again elected to go over the head of mark williams who was committed on the lead hard to pass it a little bounce to him now tackled by lowly for shooter well, the boundary line and the umpire said he wanted it deliberately. Still time enough for a Hawthorne score. The tackling is upsetting Adelaide's flow here, and the space between the, the lines is assisting Hawthorne as well. Nathan Loney. Just forward of the outer wing. Chips toward the lead. Down there, Dixon. Got a palm to it. Hart's there with him. 
Tim Clark at Topok. Down in the crumb. Caught by Boyle. How's the umpire seen this one? He will ball it up once with it, 10 seconds and counting left on the clock. And there's the tackle there, but once again, even the doughty ball up that's ensued here. There were three Hawthorne players already to tackle on him. Well done by Hudson down to Thompson. And the danger should be passed. Siren, oh, and right on the siren, Hodge copped a knee in the back. In. They want it desperately at the moment. Ball knocked back in Clark's direction to Everett from 45. He had a long, hard look at them across the face. Gee, that was good. Behind. good work by Trent Crow. Then he shoved his body in again to move the pack off the ball. Originally stood up in the tackle and tried to shrug it off, but took on two. That's what the the benefit of a big, powerful body at centre-half forward can do while they're trying to blood kids, the Hawks. Hart, short. Thompson's got it. Wants to go, and now it's 50. Williams just hanging on. He realised what Thompson wanted to do and trying to frustrate that. Look at the size a there. Too long. One's a full forward and one's a rover, midfielder. And they're both the same size. Well, I would argue that Thompson's probably taller than Williams. Thompson towards half forward. Rusciuto comes on a searching lead and marks inside the centre square. Kicks for space now in front of Henschel. He was up. Brown in close attendance. This is Edwards. Feeds it outside the 50. Shirley was slung as he kicked. Floats towards the centre half forward position. Rusciuto played it in front and had to go himself. Henshaw, about five metres in from the line, pulls it back. Button! Well, that was a very good mark. A very good mark. Three or four metres out. Nothing Lekas could do. He was there body to body. But Burton did some hard work and then just fell back and judged it to a nicety. He did it, yeah, he did it beautifully, didn't he? Controlled yep. where the ball was going to or the position where the ball was dropping to. That's 50, unless it's a goal. And it's, it's a goal. goal. Ten possessions for Burton, his first goal. Brett Burton coming off a 20-possession game last week. And he did win Adelaide's goal kicking in 2002 with 51 goals, so he knows where they are. Of course, lucky to be playing. Got off a rough conduct charge a couple Ooh. of weeks ago. The handoff from the middle. Loney and Crawford share it. Back to Loney. Long, high kick. Williams under it. Ball thumped clear. Ball down at Crowe. He tried to thread a clever handball through, but got to McLeod. Caught. And the umpire will bounce it inside 50 for the Hawks. So they've released Nathan Loney a couple of times into space to utilise that kick going forward. Hodge, almost a chance there. Left the ball behind. Burton kicks it out very wide towards the interchange gates. McGregor, we've said several times, being forced a long way up the ground. Again gets it, but is escorted across the line. So boundary throw it directly in front of our commentary position. Hawks lead it by 11. And their players justified that lead. And over the top, Shirley. Thompson in desperate trouble was wrestled down. Ladson trying to slap it his way. Bock smothered off the boot by Loney. And across the line it goes yet again. Strong tackle by Hodge to get Thompson down just moments ago. He seems to be okay, Hodge, after copping that knee right on quarter time. Hudson directed it behind the pack. It comes back to him. Forced to kick goes five metres. Sewell. Good kick. Yes, obviously played a little volleyball in his time. Opportunity for Rutten. Now McLeod across half back. Swings it very wide. Pushing up the ground is hard. He's got it. Henschel offers the lead, Great needs to be kick. precise, and he was half with the kick. Henschel has it, just the defensive side of the wing. Goes with the pop-up pass. Bassett ran on from fullback, looks up, tries to spear the kick, missed the intended target. Now chance for the Hawks, Sewell. Back to Brown, wide to Everett, he looks up. Hasn't got a lot to go to, so has to hold it up. Vandenberg shuts him down. Yeah, Vandenberg works for him, which drags Hudson towards him. And so there's space long now if somebody's willing to lead up to it. Short. Sewell. He hands off the Hodge, and he goes wide. Chance here for Perry against Smith, a one-on-one. -on -one. 
Paul knock to the deck. He backs Smith in that battle and he does win it with some poise. Has a bounce, looks up, has another, thinks about a third. Player coming at him was Rusciuto. Kicks the ball half forward and half. Got back and with outstretched hands was able to snaffle it on defensive 50. Back to midfield. Good kick to Edwards cleverly. Doubt he would know where to run, at least initially. Back tracks. Now he kicks inside the forward 50. Burton is outnumbered. Almost the mark, though. Burton did well in that situation. McGregor in front. Had a chance. Jacobs. Now Sewell. Jacobs held a long time in the tackle. Advantage is paid. And Brown comes out of defense. Short one is on. And they work it forward towards the half forward line. Boyle. Now the mark is taken by Crow. 55 meters out. Williams, well, the sun may have been a problem. That's all we can say, but he's got to get a free kick. It bounced off his chest. And I think the sun did present one or two problems there. If you see the shadows, that ball coming right in on the line of the sun. I think Van Berlo panicked a bit too, Dennis, knowing the ball was going to make Mark Williams without him getting to the contest. He panicked into a, uh, well, putting bodily pressure on him and got a bit overzealous. Mm. Well, he's only a young man. He had a lot on his tectonic yep. plate right there. <laughs> <laughs> so Williams, a question of accuracy, will kick from about 40 metres out. Now he's missed. Slides it across the face and through for behind. Well, geophysicists should have known exactly where the sun was going to be. Well, he didn't drop the mark in no, fairness. That's true. He was relying on the sun. Hart, short pass, back pocket. Hudson's taken the mark. If you come out with it, he was calculating for a bit of movement in the earth as well. Probably was. You know, this out. time of year, it's, it's low in the sky, that sun. Thompson got it from Goodwin. He chips it to Edwards. They've worked this pretty well. Doughty looks back to half back, back to Thompson. Longish kick. Perry looked up at. Burton and Burton looked up at Perry as if to say, well, I'm not going for it. Shirley gets it, goes to Edwards, chip kick, McGregor on the lead, gets there, takes the mark. Still outside 50, he's got a one-on-one -on -one in the square, ignores that, goes with the chip kick towards Henschel. And he got a nudge after. Umpire says no 50, and Henschel put on the angle, opens it up. And yeah, for some reason, Doughty was left free on 50. It had to be a perfect kick to Doughty. And he did it. Got it there. He's going to have to carry the line 52 metres with the kick. So he'll look to dish off first rather than... Dishes off to what Rusciuto's got three to beat normally. They're pretty good odds for Rusciuto. Couldn't do it this time. Ladson runs out of the fence. Just in time, got the bounce away. Everett. Wobbles it towards half forward. Rolling ball. Trent Crowe was there. Rough head, late inclusion. Tapped it to his own advantage and now he's got it. He might even... No, he won't. He gives it to Edwards and the Adelaide Crows can reload. Bit of fatigue there on the kick. Go, run! Edwards out wide. Good kick to Van Berlo. Meters in the clear. Hesitates. Now goes long towards half forward and Perry. Clever little nudge there on Brennan. Takes the mark. Just moved him under the football. In this term, Adelaide 17 marks. Hawthorne just four. Certainly possessing it. Yeah, certainly possessing it a whole lot better now, the Adelaide Crows. They're Doughty. utilising the space of this ground. Doughty. Hodge drops back. Indicating he wants some movement. Players to push up. Forced to come back to Goodwin, who goes long. Awful have got some numbers back here. Coming back with a flight of it was Lewis. A bit of holding on going on by Joel Smith, not seen. And the ball is out of bounds. Everett was just in front of that group as well. So it was four on two. Alistair Clarkson on the phone. Spent time at Werribee, St Kilda, Central District, and Port Adelaide. Hodge goes to ground. The hand pass was stifled. They need to clear the zone. Vandenberg sold into trouble by Brown. And the ball up. And they say he had an eye on an AFL job at all of those four jobs in the lead up, Dennis. Been wanting to coach an AFL team for a long time. Serves him right there. <laughs> Hudson. Knocked it down. Thompson's over it. He got it out. Good tackle laid. And the umpire will have to sort it out with yet another bounce. 
Lewis, Osmond, Boyle and Mitchell still on the bench there. And that's not good news for Sam Mitchell. Maybe unable to come back on fourth in handballs overall for the AFL this year. Hudson and Everett. Everett nearly did get it away. Sewell has been pretty good this afternoon. That handball not so good. McLeod, the last person you want to give it to. Jacobs stole it from him. Thought about getting it out of the pack. Didn't really want to. And the umpire will bounce. That's one where the, the person who's defending, like Spider Everett, has to tumble a punt forward under pressure and, and respect that his teammates further up the ground are going to read that play and get to the end of the ball. Everett and likes the combining. Sends it high towards the wing. Crawford didn't appear to have the football. Roughhead missed the target. Matner comes away. Hugs the boundary line with the kick. Awkward half volley in front of Perry. Goes back towards Bock. Opportunity now for McLeod. Well, Let him go. Well played. Found some space, but the kick not well. The kick was good. McGregor's got it. Right on the 50. Not his intention to find McGregor, but they'll take it. McGregor, you would say, is too far out to score. Now, anywhere else on the ground. Now by the call play on by now. He's well, now he, done it. He has now, yes. Down towards the pocket. Rusciuto, out number two on one. Getting the crumb is Smith. Clever kick to Everett. Everett with runners alongside. Feeds it out wide. Dixon. Looping hand pass. Lekas can go again and does to Crow. Shy of the wing, Crow. Into Mines. Vandenberg sold into trouble. This hasn't resulted too well for Hawthorne, although Rucker did nicely. Gets it away to Loney. Back to Lekas. Lekas has a bounce. 70 metres out. Not a good kick. They just set it up to the good mark. Made the kick look okay by Williams. Just popped it up over his head. Thought it was tailor made for Bassett, but wasn't it? Williams just went straight up and got it. I don't think <laughs> this is time in the game here for Angelo. Uh, yeah, gee, you, Bassett's got about eight or nine centimeters on him. Yeah. You almost held him up there. Well, look, the problem is when you sort of grab as he did, you limit yourself with your jump, don't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. As Peter Brock used to say, what do you do when somebody's on your tail trying to pass you? Do you try and keep you know, stopping their run. He used to say, no, you forget about them and drive at your best, and they've got to be better to, to go past you. That's what Bassett should have done. Gone with his best. He's done the same again here, Williams. Yes, misses again. Same line exactly to the left-hand side. Yeah, your best, they obviously have to have, be, have more talent than you or be in a better position than you to beat you. So if you just go the footy, that's what Gary Hughes used to make him such a brilliant defender. Was it once the ball was in flight, it couldn't change its course. He used to just follow the thing. Hart with the one-two. Danger here. Roughhead came at him. He got the kick away. He's hoping Beautiful. for a good one and he hits him. Wonderful kick. Back into the corridor and with some space, Edwards, if he wants to use it. Ran himself into trouble. Then out of trouble. Free kick downfield after the handball. No, it'll come back. So Edwards to Goodwin. Midfield to Doughty. Back to Goodwin. Looks up. He's got Thompson at half forward and takes the mark. Wants to play on. Left foot from 50. That's way out of bounds on the full. Never a chance to score. And the Hawks tackling and aggression at the man with the ball is continuing to pay dividends. Your man Hutto comes off. Dennis. Yep. Pull up his socks. One sock up, one sock down. Is it always the right one? It's like the one that? without the shin guard that's always down. He starts looking as fresh as yesterday's coffee, doesn't he, Hutto? And gets progressively worse. <laughs> There's Edwards. Little short one comes to Doughty. Now Burton 60 metres out towards the pocket. The mark is held by McGregor, so they'll take another shot. But they're getting plenty of it now, the Crows. Good control there by Brett Burton. Could have blazed away on the run, but McGregor with his back to goal. So easy to ignore a player like that. Watch this coming in here. Very easy right here now to blaze away and ignore this bloke who it's only a dinky kick 20 metres ahead. But it makes sense. He gets a set shot at goal well within his range now. Ken McGregor has really been working hard this afternoon. Not bad. Tries to look it. it back. Not enough. Just started it to the left. Held its line. Angelo Lekas goes to the bench and 
Young Jordan Lewis. That's good. See, he choked it off. He didn't <laughs> go on with it. We like that. No, that's admirable. <laughs> Two goals last week, Ken McGregor, and in the absence of Scott Walsh, they need him. They're missing their number one goal kicker for the season this afternoon, the Crows. Chip kick wide is good. Mark taken by Campbell Brown, who, as we said, is back after being dropped for breaking a window. Crawford works hard. Goes long towards Crawford. Corners, he got the kick away by Burton. And by said it was no nudge in the back. Biglands runs into trouble. He too caught hot in the ball. Crawford gave Burton a little push two off the ball. Bit of aggro there, and it'll come back. Free kick will go to Lewis. Now, Crow came up with a secondary tackle, which means the stronger body at centre-half forward is not there. He got the call to play on. Just chips it. The four on one, and Adelaide had the four. Edwards a push off on Ladson, and yeah. the umpire said free kick to Ladson. It was there, but he's a bit stiff mm. because Brennan didn't get his paid against him at that end of the ground in the first quarter. That's a good rub for the Hawks. There's Loney a good kick. across the ground, intended for Hodge, I fancy. Behind him is Williams. Goes to Hodge now, deep in the pocket. Long foot's Goodwin, comes back to the middle, Joel Smith, stepped aside, coming through strongly was McLeod, knocked it to his own advantage, wanted it most, swings it around the outer side wing, and the mark is taken by Perry. Gee, that was wonderful play by the champion there, McLeod. Just picked it off and read the ball, read Hodge's intention. Edwards. Now Rutten, in fairness to Joel Smith, it was an awkward one. If he went forward, it could have carried him. Virtually had to wait. Here's Bock inside the centre square. Long towards the pocket. Good mark going back by Jacobs. Well done by Jonathan Hay, who actually just put a bit of body on the opponent there so he couldn't jump into Jacobs. Loney gives it to Clark. He's kicked a goal, Clark, from left half back, goes up towards the wing. Mark is taken by Boyle. Inside five minutes to half time, the Hawks would be very happy if they went in with the lead at the main break. Crawford's wide, big leap, couldn't bring the ball down, no free kick. Biglands looped it over the top to Shirley. Crawford had a couple to beat then, couldn't beat them both. Boyle and good mark taken by McGregor. He's leading up on Danny Jacobs, and Jacobs is affording him a lot of space, and he's playing a good, committed game here, Ken McGregor. Henschel goes to a wall for a shoot on Jacobs. Does it again. It's like Groundhog Day. He's down there every time they go to him. Brown, he gives to Smith, and he has some space. Four minutes to half time. Lurking in the shadows, Joel Smith. Gladson. Over the top. Taken by Lewis. In fact, it was Osmond who gave it to Lewis. Now Brennan, back to Lewis. Osmond goes again. Under some pressure that time. Well done by Doughty. Forced the error with a kick that was over Boyle's head and bounced out of bounds. Certainly when Crow goes into the ruck for Hawthorne as Everett gets his rest, they have no target ahead. He saw the kick that was targeted to Shane Crawford and Rhett Biglands picked it up, so they're losing that target as Crowe goes into the ruck. Here he is against Biglands now. In from the side, Lewis didn't do much with it. Shirley's hand pass on the ground, but Rutten able to pick up. Now Thompson has it. Hart's on in the opposite pocket. Goes between he and Bassett. Bassett came up, spilt the mark, tries to hand pass to Hart. They haven't made a very good fist of this. Hart's under pressure. Over the top comes Williams. Williams not playing the ball, just appealing to the umpire. Hodge close to the boundary line. It's out of bounds. You wonder if they'll ever play a free kick against the other guy for keeping it in there. Not the first person that's into the pack, but the second guy comes in and makes sure that the, the first person can't get it out. From the knockdown, Thompson, he got it to Riley. It's been a fair bit of time on the bench this afternoon. Pops it wide. Brennan leaps, Henschel, got a fist on it, but about to get caught, just gets oh, away. Right. Shirley, spearing ball to Edwards. Bright sunshine on the outer wing. Big game this for Adelaide. They're second on the ladder now, but they lose this. They're a game, or one win from ninth. Burton, he's on the wing. Chips it to Rusciuto, dives, takes the mark, but inside the centre square. Three minutes. Room to half time. Yeah, as 
a big little shuffle stand. There is room for the two full forwards, McGregor and Perry, but they have to lead into the pockets. They can't lead up the middle. Biglands hoping for Perry. Got his That's hand cool. knocked. The umpire saw it. And Ian Perry will have a shot at goal. Hasn't been overly accurate this year. Ian Perry, 23 goals, 21. It's a drag on the arm here. So this not through by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, come on. He's improved his kicking, hasn't he? Two goals last week. Started on the bench this afternoon, even though Welsh is not playing. Come on, Dennis, talk him up. Stand on the mark. I want him to kick it. You look after the West <laughs> Australian boys, don't you? <laughs> well, he does come from East Perth. Eddie Lopes, left foot, look good off the boot. It is. Oh, boy. Even he thought it was okay. A behind. The noisy post too, aren't they? Isn't it? It, yes. it sounds like it's hollow from the very top to the base of the ground. Probably got something to do with the temperature. Don't know what. Oh, we'll have to get Van Berlo yeah, to get tell Van Berlo us. up here to discuss it. Well, it's a lower note, is it? <laughs> Depending on how cold it is. Yeah, I'm sure it's got something to do with it. Poor Robert residents. To Hodge. And not a lot of people live here, do The boys are bad. <laughs> It'll be thrown in 31 to 20. <laughs> residents. <laughs> Yeah, not a lot of people live there. Yes, there. more timber in the noise. Oh, that's singing. Oh, just imagine up the back of that stand, too, talking about the temperature. It would be the coalition of the cold, wouldn't it? Coalition of the frozen. Boundary throw in, and it's going to be a free kick to Crow. Trying hard, Trent Crow. Not a good kick, though. Drifting back, the mark is taken by Riley. Kicked it off his... Yeah, you know, well, kicked it when he was still running backwards. You've got to be coming forward. McGregor. Gathered it after the bounce, goes to Tawny, also started on the bench for Adelaide, loads up, Henschel inside, 50, a little nudge, umpire said it was little enough to get away with. And Trent Henschel, who also kicked two goals for Adelaide last week, will line up. Yeah, I don't think he acted it, Brennan, but was he, he, would look, he looked like he just wanted to jump at the footy. He wasn't prepared for any contact, so it was light contact. It was definitely a forward movement. And the umpire believes that was fine. From the Territory, from Palmerston Magpies up there, first round draft pick or number five overall. And this a big kick for Adelaide. Might even be the last kick of the half. And that's what he's got ahead of him. Ten goals, five this year. Took a long time and Swings it around. How will the umpire adjudicate that one? To goal! <laughs> well, you can take as much as you like, time-wise, if you go to thread them through. I tell you, it was a non-convincing approach, wasn't it? He stuttered, he went sideways. Tawny decides to put pressure on the key backman here. There's one movement. And then he still gets three steps to the time where he gets to the footy. Well, if you saw a guy like that up on a high wire walking like that, you'd clear the street, wouldn't you? <laughs> Don't cry! That was a terrible approach, but it was a goal and a great result. It's half time! That was the delivery stride of Max Walker. Aurora Stadium finds Hawthorne five points in front. 4-7 plays 4-2. Interesting game. The Hawks led it by 16 at quarter time. Plenty to play for. Adelaide looking to make second place their own. Here's Tawny. Ford of the wing. Kicks inside the forward 50. Remarkable stuff, Dip. And a good mark is taken down there by Thompson. Uh, ornithology's always been a strong point of mine, Dennis. I know what you're saying, Dirk. Crows and Hawks. Good body movement, oh, body placement here as well. Just occupies the front position, and Joel Smith is a much bigger person, but just can't get to where the ball's dropping. Well done, Scotty Thompson. For the first time, can the Crows hit the lead today? He's about 20 metres out. He kicks a goal, they lead by a point, and he's done it. 
Well done. Good start for the Crows. With pick 16, traded him for pick 12, so they would say they're ahead on the deal. He's been the best first year player at the Demons. Crawford shovels it out for to Osmond. Hodge and Clark share it with the one two. Chip kick, not such a good kick, made it tough for Loney. Looked to get them out of trouble. Pinched off him by Burton. Long kick will bounce through. Last four in the game. We've only had ten, so that's quite a swing. And they're up by seven points. Davis Quigley and Nichols, the umpires. This is Matthew yeah, Nichols. Man. Perfect bounce, too. Clean oh, possession man. taken by Hudson, falling to the ground. Hand passes down towards half forward. Brown, tackled by McLeod, surely to Edwards. Edwards kicks out wide, pitches just inside the boundary. Thompson takes it across. It'll be thrown in. Campbell Brown and Andy McLeod there, just before the bounce. Campbell Brown was just doing a few little shoulder swats to the in between the uh, shoulder blades. Hudson doing okay against Everett. Won that one down as well. Was that in the back the good one? No free kick. And the ball held in against Tawney by Vandenberg. There's a real hold on period here for the Hawks. Adelaide, if you just feel like they're making a move in a low scoring game, they kicked two goals in two minutes. Bound 60 metres out, Burton flew over the top, directed it down, Edwards hooks it around the boundary, coming up was Perry, bounced off his chest, taken by Sewell, gets the hand pass to Dixon. Wants to cover the open side, not a lot to go to, trouble, Jacobs, Dixon, and Matna. Oh. Umpire set play on, didn't hold it, forced to get it out, gets it out there, Henschel, chip kick, McGregor thought he had it, Prosciutto chopped in and took the mark. Chief. He could have rushed it behind then. Luke Hodge. Dixon, and there's Hodge with a sore jaw. He got clipped there. Watch comes through here. And oh, there's an elbow, an errant arm thrown out. Is it Rashudo? Yes. Mm. And he lines up here after colliding with Hodge. Ruthlessness does run in the Rashudo family. Is Brothers, a used car salesman. <laughs> Lines up from directly out. From 40 good metres, kick. pretty good off the boot. Superstar pops it through. Jaw. Down goes Luke Hodge. And earlier, of course, just before quarter time, copped that knee, I think it was from Biglands. Right on the siren. Backing back, Biglands coming over the top. And now he's into the action again. Full credit to him. The ball up, but while well, all that's been happening, of course, Hawthorne falling off the pace. 44 plays 31. Early going third term. Not a particularly high bounce. Hudson knocked it only as far as Clark. Untidy hand pass. McLeod kicks inside the forward. 50 Henschel again. Proving a dangerous forward. Trent Henschel has marked 40 metres out directly in front. Well done by Adelaide when they worked that ball out of the pack. The kick eventuated. Watch this. One, two, three. There's four Hawthorne players around McLeod when he wins the ball forward. So he's obviously reading it better than anybody else in the immediate vicinity. And that's a true advantage of a, a clearance. And Henshaw he can pick it up and he reads it better than his opponent for the falling ball. Mark's inside 50 this afternoon. Adelaide 10, Hawthorne 5. Henshaw going at his second then. All the momentum suddenly running with the Crows. Henshaw, good looking effort, puts a throw. Here? You wouldn't teach that. No. If you were in fact, looking for the textbook, quite a kick. <laughs> that wouldn't quite be it, but in fact, that's as, that's as fluid as a place kick. Adelaide out to their biggest lead of the game, 19 points. Second team on the ladder starting to assert their authority. Clark in the middle of the pack. Hudson 
stole it from him. Gave to Burton. He launches a torpedo inside. 50. Probe down there. Couldn't mark it. Falls to McGregor. Kick around the body. Sensational. Five goals in eight minutes for Adelaide to start the third term. The last two goals have been one clearance, one kick in the forward line for two goals. That's the way both of them are gone. This is their first clearance, a free kick. Centre square infringement, Everett, penetrating kick in from the side. A big leap by Osborne, didn't complete the mark. Goes shuffling into that pack to try and get the footy back. The base of it in his rough head will have a bounce. And... Ben Dixon has had to go into the back line now as well, which has taken away Crowe away from the forward line and also Dixon's leading prowess. Hodge over the shoulder, into the path of Clark, who knocks it goalward, trying to back through that pack down there was Hart. Whistle ball up again. Interesting situation. I mean, you come out immediately after half-time and clearly you get the feeling the Hawks must have been on good terms with themselves. This has to be psychological. Well, it's almost a blitz. It's one... You win a possession out of the middle, you kick it to the forward line, and they kick a goal straight away. Virtually every defender was playing behind, though. They just didn't come back yep. in time for the third quarter. Bassett did well, dug it out of there. Matner gave it across to Goodwin. McGregor, now the run of McLeod carries him down towards half forward, settles, sends it along to the advantage of Perry, almost the mark, could have been wrestled down, no free kick. They've got the crumb. Well played by the defence then. Dixon comes away, Lekas has it, left half back. Wants Brennan, hits Brennan in the shadows. Now Lekas back into the corridor. Oh, he went backwards. Henschel shut him down, corralled him, forced him to go all the way back to Sewell. That's at a half back. Now to the open side, Loney. Campbell Brown looks up, sees Smith, hits him. McLeod just got a little nudge on him. Didn't put the kick off, but found Everett too far out to score. Now he's going to have to go short because Ben Hart zoned off now with not worrying about Dixon. He can just zone off. Centering ball and finds Angelo Lekas. And that's exactly what he does in the end. He has to look sideways and Angelo Lekas, clever player. Aloney's gone over to Burton now so he feels a little bit of freedom. So he's proactive in turn. The man who leads the race for the Coleman, Mark Williams, yet to kick a goal this afternoon for Hawthorne. He's never kicked a goal against Adelaide, Mark Williams. He's never played against Adelaide, which makes it tough. Yeah. It's the first time up. he's done that. It's going to make it difficult. Yeah. Angelo Lekas from 48. He had understatement to say they need this one, and he slots it. On the way down, clean possession again to Hudson. That's a couple of times now. Flirting with danger will shoot. They got the hand pass out though. Burton didn't have the football. Wasn't tackled as it turned out. Just an arm across his body. Pumped out of there by Hodge to Clark to Loney. Feeds it wider still to Lekas. Lekas 75 metres out. May have been touched off the boot. Up in front went Hart. Opportunity at the back for Williams. He's battling a couple. It's builds out of the pack now. Rusciuto taken down. Held to him. We'll have a bounce 35 metres out. Taken down by Osborne. Come on! Lukey Hodge has uh, certainly been slowed up since that crack on the jaw. He's going to the back flank now and gives Joel Smith a run on the ball. Rusciuto goes to the outside of the boot. Hugs the boundary line. Will it go out? Yes, it will. McGregor leading up again. We've said that all afternoon. He's being pushed a long way up the ground. Disconsolate there in the background. Sam Mitchell. Problems with that foot. Not sure it was Rusciuto. We saw the replay. It may have been Hudson. Still, doesn't matter much. It's sore. Over the ball is Smith. Tackled by Rusciuto. Sliding in Hudson. Opportunity for Thompson. Pulls it back towards the middle. How will it bounce? Awkwardly for both parties. Matna played it brilliantly. Directed it down to Goodwood. Long kick from his boot. He's hoping for Perry. It's got about four to beat. Crowe knocked him over. McGregor caught. McLeod somehow. Can he get a kick away? No, a handball make that. Edwards. He gives it up to Shirley. Loads up. Brown got back Ooh. and got there. Wants to play on quickly. Sewell. Made it tough for him. About to get caught. Shrugged the tackle. 
Smith is on the wing, takes the mark. Hawthorne has found some momentum again. Johnny Hayes gone to full forward for the Hawks. Crows a loose man in defence, and that's Dixon into the back line in replacement. Oh, hey, gee, that's good hands. Nice mark by Osmond. In front of Hart, who Ben Hart said today in the press that he wants to play another two or three seasons, the 30-year-old. Lekas gave to Smith. Crows inside 50. It sits for him. He wanted to get back onto the other side. Now chance for Clark. Burton came at him. Bassett. That's and instinct. A bounce. That's a lack of instinct as a forward by Trent Crowe. Should have taken the kick when he was under pressure, but on his correct foot. Bassett didn't have anyone to go to, so the boundary line is not such a bad result. We'll get a ball in. That's half the art of playing as a forward as we watch the Campbell Brown mark. Good concentration. Half the art of playing as a forward is when you know when to take your opportunity. Here's McLeod. He's most good at that. He's looking dangerous now, McLeod. Virtually onto the chest of Edwards. Knocked away by Sewell. Oh. Dixon hand pass untidy. McLeod's run on. Sewell tried to stop him. McLeod is sported by a whistle. It's coming back and Sewell will take the free kick in the back pocket. He's pretty fortunate that he's in the right spot at the right time and the gather by the Adelaide Crows went over the shoulder of Sewell. Brown, good mark. Released it a little prematurely. They've got the numbers though. Brennan back to Brown. Brown kicks it up towards the wing. Now a chance for the Hawks. This is Smith. Looks inside the forward 50. Some indecision. Runs across the ground. He's trying to pinpoint it there to Hay. It was knocked away brilliantly by Dowdy. Backed up by Rutten. Gave a hand pass to Bassett. Bassett goes over the top. Tawny around the outer side. Now it's going to be a relay free kick. In fact, it may have been back-to-back -back relay free kicks there. Tawny was the last man to be put down. They've got the ball on the wing to the Adelaide Crows. She is... is Joel Smith had the ball. Mark Williams was just unsure to lead. You can see he's lost his confidence that they're going to kick it to him. Burton got it from Edwards, gave it to Thompson, who gives it an almighty roost toward full forward. Goodman down there. Couldn't take the mark. McGregor half held by Jacobs. Hodge. He's caught by Goodwin. A little high, caught into the umpire. Gee, they're getting a good rub down there close to goals. Although well, that's a second free kick. Luke Hodge finds Boyle. Oh. Gave it to Clark, who didn't have anywhere to go. Almost didn't want it. Osmond's half volley, magnificent. Gets around an attempted tackle from Tawny. Superb bit of work. Kick not so good. A couple to beat Williams. Boundary line might be the best option here. Throws it out. That wasn't the best option. And a free kick to Adelaide. He did so well there, Osborne. He'll go to Nathan Bassett. About the kick. Had to make it to Williams on the full under that type of pressure. Good tackle though. Pass it right half back. Told to hurry up now. Saw Williams. He goes closer to Bassett. So Bassett then has to kick across his body and gets a lot of height. And still McGregor able to come up and take the mark. All that, the crows. that that is poor defence. Short one is on the good one. They trail by five points at halftime, Adelaide. As you can see now, they're up by 19, and they haven't looked back. Short one to Shirley. Yep. Losing past his good one. Gets around Everett. He go across the ground. He does. Just squares the ball to the outer side and Tawny. Tawny through the centre square. Needs to kick it. Good aggressive chase there from Crowe. Awkward bounce for Thompson. Goes to Doughty. Doughty swings at goal. I think he's put it through. No pressure at all. This is disturbing for Hawthorne. It's Deluxe, it's Deluxe, it's Deluxe, Hungry Jacks. Flame grilled beef. Cheese. More beef, more cheese. I like that. Bacon, tomato, lettuce and mayo. That's Hungry Jacks Bacon Deluxe. It's delish. It's Deluxe, Hungry Jacks, Hungry Jacks. The burgers are better than Hungry Jacks. They demolished Fremantle with their first half last week, Adelaide, and now they're demolishing Hawthorne with their second here. Hudson, another takeaway to his name. Rashido wobbles it inside, 50. Brown 
Hodge into trouble, out of trouble, wide to Crawford. Smith. Yeah, held back by that shoelace. It's almost the most important shoelace in his whole armoury. Sewell. He chips it wide. Oh. Is chopping it off the bird man. He just floated across and took the mark and finds McGregor in the middle. How would you describe that, Derp? Oh, <laughs> beautifully uh, done, wasn't it? Well, when you started the second half yeah. with that, uh, what was it, ornithological discourse, yeah. there's the ball, Thompson has oh, yeah. it 55 metres out. <laughs> yeah, floated through there magnificently. Johnny Hayes back, but he can't cut up Simon Goodwin. What kind of bird was it, Dermot, that oh, interrupted Blaine? Sparewing plover. You need a plover that won't drive you crazy when you come to the footy, don't you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're just about ready for nesting season. They normally lay four eggs on the uh, ground. I gather we've given up on the game. <laughs> Here's a good one. He's in the right full forward pocket. Never let it be said. Simon Goodwin, who got Adelaide's first goal at this end, should kick this. Just drifted back left to right. Oh, Perfectly. Nice four. Splits the middle. Now it's two he's got. Metropolitan Plumbing. 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 Just a quick reminder that Metropolitan Plumbing can fix leaking taps, block drains, plus hot water repairs and replacement within the hour. All areas, 24 hours, 7 days. Yes, 7 days a week. Metropolitan Plumbing. Two goals now for Simon Goodwin. Missed 12 games last season. One of them through a tripping report. Around 22, but a couple of premiers by the age of 22. He's had a good career. Sewell picked it up at half back, gave to Crawford. Hoping forever, it takes the mark and did it under a little bit of pressure from Bob. Adelaide, nine of the last 10 goals. Kick towards half forward. Free kick's been paid. Pro got the benefit of the doubt and there uh, certainly was some doubt according to you Dennis oh, I thought so mm. yeah. how would you know <laughs> well there's about there's about three Adelaide players behind the pack so the umpire had a big call to make <laughs> he's seeing Hudson close to goals here and that's who he ends up kicking it oh big leap by Hutto down goes Hodge, Matt Matt, then Burlo taken down, Williams can't find a way through, well done Tawny, and now Hart, short one from Goodwin, McGregor, they're looking impressive as they did early last week now Adelaide, they do it in spurts but when they go, they're very fluent, Rusciuto, went back to Edwards, now Matt Matt, out wide, Perry, so much for being very fluent. Perry, eminently forgettable by the Crows this last 30 seconds or so as they eventually get it down to left half forward and the mark is taken by Riley. Too far out to score. Nick Hutto's drifted down. Hutto's unmarked. Goes in his direction. From behind, well done there by Boyle coming back. Got the ball on the ground, forging his way through. Though was Matt that almost got there too. Brown stood his ground. Hodge, it's coming back, I think, to the man on the deck. Brown, held a long time by McGregor. Inside four minutes to three-quarter time. Campbell Brown. Oh, wide to oh. Crow, just inside the line. And that was brought in a bit, the line in that pocket. Yes, satellite technology. That's what it was, and he's wearing the GPS on his back as well, so that's why I knew where he was. Although he didn't know where the McGregor was with the kick. He needed satellite technology on McGregor's jumper. He really tried to overkick that to get it to Danny oh, Jacobs. Party time now. Yeah, it's, it's falling apart, and there's Alistair Clarkson. You see what Craig was trying to do, and he overkicked it at full stride. See Jacobs there on the left. And the ball turned over and got the helicopters and drops pretty quickly. As does his head. Brett Burton lines them up. He's got two. 
one of this third term onslaught came from his boot and they can just about seal it here it's the post by three quarter time and it's a let off for Hawthorne and the clouds numbers blasted on that young man's cheeks and again that post resonating like a giant oba <laughs> Hayes got it in the pocket <laughs> drill a hole in the side of it and just gently blow over it yes if you're Mick Jagger hands Perry and he's missed he's played a tune <laughs> <laughs> they're very musical these Adelaide crows out of the back pocket Brown to Smith Joel Smith is running and hugging the boundary line goes for distance too but they're outnumbered back there Rutten showing the judgment in flight see how he got pushed under the ball then inexperienced players have that done to them frequently you've got to understand that your opponents there you've got to have a knowledge he's there and you've got to set yourself physically for contact and and stand up to it lewis got a hand pass to leck as he was dragged down by dowdy goes one holding the ball nothing doing dowdy pleads his case and we've got a ball up slightly the attacking side of right center wing for the hawks and you've got to be careful pleading your case in the modern game throw it in the ruck knocks it down and they all played their case again but the umpire says no i'll bounce it but you can't get 50 meters awarded against you if it's a bounce down you can't well you can get a free paid against you for saying that bounce was terrible sir if you don't use the sir smith clark lekas inside 50 adelaide with the numbers floating back taking the mark 20 and not allowed to play on in a hurry but he wants to because he's got a couple of free one of them's heart he'll yeah. oh, oh. is that 50 over throws <laughs> uh, he might still get it here roughhead shuts him down and box now the free man at half back and bolt oh. is hit well osborne was the closest man then oh tell you what jordan lewis is just he's felled andy mcleod in the middle of the ground didn't punch him and just turfed him mm having a kick to kick with one of the policemen before the game John Lewis uh oh now 50 what was that all about you may have said something no, I don't think it could have been anything else now he just shakes his head he's not willing to look at the umpire because he knows something else might come out he's chastened by all of that McLeod will want to honour the lead here. He's only got two target players. Hudson, who goes back now, and Perry in the goal square. Interesting kick from McLeod. But rather, good end all right, though. McGregor kicks the goal. How about that? It's a and stock take. 25 seconds to three-quarter time. Eight goals won this term, Adelaide. Their best third quarter for the season. And what a season they're having. They can confirm the second spot on the ladder tonight with the victory here, and it's looking as if that is what's going to happen. Umpire doesn't call time off. Clock continues to run. Biglands, free kick's been picked out. It'll go Adelaide's way, but you wouldn't think there's time enough for them to crack it for a score. Biglands. He sends it wide. Dowdy the target. How will the umpire view that? He's paid the mark so Ooh. he can load up with the torpedo if he wants to. He, he could and just see there's a boil he just pushed him back off the mark and I thought for a second if he had got a little bit more firmer and he had a back that he might have got a 50. Goes for the screw and he gets that. onto it. That's going a long way. No score. <laughs> So at three-quarter time here, the smiles on the faces of the Adelaide players tends to give you the indication that they know they've got the four points here if they want it. 12-3, 75 Adelaide, Hawthorne stuck on 5-7, 37. He has walked straight off. So it's not related, Hodge dives in, Goodwin. Ball shuffled out of the pack, trying to get it through his legs, Brad Sewell. Will the umpire see that? He'll see his 
it won't be ball. it won't be related it was lower leg that he broke in that that incident which was uh one of the more horrific we've seen captured on camera and that's a hamstring so that's bad luck for the young man hudson flicks it down osborne slung doughty too slick for mcleod coming through there was lekas now loney runs inside the center square feeds it wider still vandenberg Showing a lot of pace oh. through midfield off the ball. A player went down. It might have been Dowdy, was it? Yeah. Not sure, but in any case, the ball has been marked on the forward line by Williams. Almost cleared Williams again. Didn't see that one behind play. I was watching the movement in the forward line. I thought they actually overpossessed the ball. Probably was a re should have been a release by Loney rather than a handball back when he was in free space in the midfield. And that he's got a, a, a kick forward then. It's good vertical leg. There's the man down. Not a show at this, Mark Williams. Yet to register a major. He should kick this. 40 metres out. Then he comes. Straight through the middle. Through traffic. Lewis. On the end of Sewell's handball. Goes the one-two back again. Wide ball. Williams on the move. Got it. And within range. It's going to be a tough kick for him from there. He's going to really have to aim it and start it up. The Spider Everett's in the square all by himself. Taking too long. He's still back pedalling. If he's going to kick this, he has to start at about a metre to the right of the near goal post. He, I reckon he thinks this range is going to test him. He's looking for a lead. He wants it. Second in Hawthorne's goal kicking last year behind Nathan Thompson, who of course departed. Sends this one towards the top of the square. Leap is gone. threw a boot at it, but couldn't get contact and to behind. And a spider. Round 15, and that's I think that's the 15th head these spiders had. Edwards, left half back. Bock, low down, play, on. play on's the call, comes back to Edwards, in trouble now, uh -oh. and passes directly out of bounds, must be deliberate, throw oh. in! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, quickly thought about it. Well, <laughs> what else could it be? Crowd uh, re-throwing. In front, Edward trying to hook it down behind. Osborne ran into a dead end. Hudson somehow got it out. Ball play to Edwards. Moved it about 15 metres. Taken by Brown just outside the 50. To Loney back to Brown. Brown looks towards the centre square. Spotting the danger though. Thompson was back. Knocked it across to Torty. To Matna confronted. Gets a hand pass away. McLeod now. They've got the numbers. Intent on drawing Crawford. Eventually goes to Bassett. Back to McLeod. Back to Bassett. Bassett. Well, McLeod just was tackled there by Crawford, and across comes Bassett. I think the moral is, uh, hey, you get off McLeod. Now, if we get, if we get time on this, from the half-back line, you must watch the effort of Rick Ladson. He's within five metres, mm. and the whole play drifts away from him, and he leaves Crawford to be the harasser of two players, and he just coasts along behind... And in the end, he's 15 yards behind with no effort. This is up with Perry, getting the free kick downfield, taking a shot. Just short off hands of behind. Adelaide increased their lead. Yeah, it was a terrible effort by Ladson. He wasn't even five metres away from the initial McLeod gather, but just coasted behind. Look, to be totally honest, you've got this quarter, you've got seven more games after. 20 minutes a quarter of play time, 80 minutes footy. Some, some Hawthorne blokes have got 500 minutes on to show that they can play footy. Rough head to Vandenberg, to Crawford, to Smith. Who gets his way through traffic and buys himself some space and some time. Kick made it tough for Latson. Made it okay for Williams. Oh. Centering ball. Danger here. Everett was there lurking. He left it for half, thinking he might grab it and I'll just stop him from playing on. Great Crawford tackle. caught. He couldn't break three. Crow gets the handball out. Williams kicks it eventually. A 99 for his career. It was a good snap. Quirky piece of play leading up to it. Hudson smothered off the ball. Crawford to Sewell. 
still widens things and goes to Brown. That's a good tackle by Burton. Down goes Brown, holding the balls to call. Well, I'm not sure Brown had many alternatives other than not to take the football. He took it virtually in the same stride was claimed by Burton, but Burton showed a lot of courage to stand his ground and take him front on. Opportunity for McGregor, had it knocked away down there. Matner got the crumb, Shirley to Bop, about 65 metres from goal to Perry in the pocket. And these marking forwards presenting problems, they have all day really. There's Henschel up ahead. McGregor, his 13 marks a career high, beating his previous best of 12 against Essendon. Back in round 11, he kicked four goals that day. Here's Perry. <laughs> Not a good effort. Hangs it way out to the left. Out of bounds on the ball. Can't believe it. Yes. Even Ian Perry shakes his head at that and says, I'm better than that. You think he'd be inclined to swear when he got one? More unusual. <laughs> well, he has kicked 23-24 this year. You're right, Dennis. So he's kicked more behinds from shots. Where does that out of bounds on the full go? It doesn't make his stats look any worse, actually. No. Everett wide to Campbell Brown. Now, just look at Vanderbilt filtering through. If they execute their skills all right here, the Hawthorne are actually finding a bit of space as it gets turned over now on the skills. Thompson, the spoiler, got it from McGregor, sends it wide. Goodwin looks up, sees a fair bit of sun on his face, and also spots Red Piglins. Plays on, loops the handball over the top. Henschel, a centering ball, Dowdy, knocked out of it. Vandenberg. Hodge oh. lacks it under immense pressure now. Shirley's got him. And it's not holding the ball. Yeah, Hodge normally a very good decision maker. Just did not see the encroaching Adelaide player behind Ladson. Bounce 40 metres out. Biglands knocks it down. Sewell got it though to Smith. Now Loney released in space. Has a bounce. Comes away from half-back, chips it up towards the wing, Crawford goes hard, Burton did well, Matner to Burton, it's three on two, the third man, not required, he was boxed, standing off the pack, Perry goes to Edwards, in trouble, well done by Joel Smith, Bock comes at it, but what to get most there was Lekas, got boot to ball, sends it down towards half-forward, Rutten over the shoulder, made it difficult for Hart, coming in strongly, Osborne, who was taken high, and he'll get the free kick a couple of times in the last few minutes. Hart, not his normal, reliable self. That's play on. Osborne. Oh. <laughs> They're running all right, the Hawks here. Goes to Loney. 50 metres out. Loney, this can bounce on. It does. It's a goal. with five years interest free plus radio rentals guarantees to beat anyone. a little better with that attempt mcleod good one and some time and some space and well some arrogance composure too yes just needs to slow this game down here because hawthorne just like last week with as you say with the dockers are just finishing running a little bit better so they'll have learned from that the crows burton to riley Sends a high bomb inside 50. Oh, Big push out that one from Henschel. He got away with one earlier, but not that one. Here's Brennan. Across the ground. Everett up from the back pocket. Some indecision. Goes for distance then. Crowe being pursued by two crows. Well worked, Trent Crowe. He has run 110 metres to get to that footy. That is fantastic footy. Here's Crawford. Takes them on and is caught. Didn't know about the man coming up from behind. Advantages by Dowdy. Across to Matner. Matner runs. Under pressure. Gets the kick off. Long towards full forward. Edwards out of the contest. Drifting across the mark is taken by Ruffhead. The Brown in the back pocket. Got Smith. the run, the Hawks. Yeah, meters in the clear. Smith. Loney is on for the next one. Not required, at least. Not initially. Forced a hand pass to Loney, who came up the ground. Then held his bounce for Vandenberg. Being quiet. His sixth possession coming up. Well, if he gets it off, he doesn't. Claimed by that's Thompson, right. that's holding it. Oh, the skipper's had a bad day. 
Yeah, it just didn't sit up on the first bounce for him and couldn't rectify the situation. So it's all about Hawthorne's skills here at the moment. Adelaide are giving them a look in and Hawthorne can't execute the skills forward to the centre. Vandenberg, the only captain in the AFL that hasn't finished in his team's top three in their best and fairest. Rutten. So he bounces all the way to 50. He kicked a goal with his first three kicks in AFL football and he hasn't scored since. In 147 kicks that he's had since kicking goals with his first three, he still hasn't scored. Do you like his stats? Uh, well, he's been posted at a pullback, or do we count that one as a rush? <laughs> it was punched through. That is stat of the season, but I'm not inclined to go there anymore. Spider Everett is in space. Dixon, back to Hodge, in trouble. Up to Loney, run it over the top and they'll bring it away. Probe took plenty of time, got it to Sewell. Good First hand pass is good. Now Smith. This next kick, very important. Goes inside the forward 50, but it bounced in front of Williams. Arriving quickly, Lekas can't keep it in. Boundary throw in just inside the attacking 50. So once again, he's forced to ride it out. Last week, it got very dicey. A bit more of a buffer at the moment, but still ample time. Burton knocks it down in front. Tawny. Wiley emerges with it. Looks across the ground, Goodwin sold into trouble on his knees, played it brilliantly, back to Hart. Bassett has it now, runs beyond half back, settles, nothing on up the ground. The men leading were far too close, advantage is paid as Bassett was tackled. Hart goes short and finds Henschel, there's Bassett, got slowly to his feet. He's got to come sideways basically you would think because he's outnumbered down the line. Back he comes to Bassett. Good play. They've got the open field ahead now for Bach. Bach. Good one. Ushers Tawny away, but in any case, Bach is running. He gets pretty close to Good one. Bypasses him with a kick. Good oh, kick. A searing pass oh. in. Perry was up. Wonderful courage by Brown going back. He isn't. How uh, gutsy he was that? It. He is full of it. the stuff you'd love to be in a trench alongside a bloke with. Kick for the outer side. Lewis Riley. Riley kept it alive. Got it to Rutten. Loops it inboard, McLeod. Over the top, back to Riley. High inside 50. McGregor's got about five to beat. Brown flew, couldn't mark it. Everett's handball a little untidy. Bounce kindly for Hodge. Peter Smith has come to the open side, but not a lot to go to. He's got Crawford short. That's going to have to be the target. Crawford looks up. And Goodwin didn't worry about Osmond for a while. Osmond's got it on the wing. Inboard, oh, three wow, crows three. lurking, and Latson takes the mark. Seven minutes on the clock. Latson goes inside 50. A goal to Williams here would make it interesting. Dives in, got a couple to beat, and Bassett picks it up. He chips it to McLeod with some space. Poor execution by Latson once again. That's that skill error forward to the centre. Getting across was Jacobs. Well, Henschel doing a pretty good job of holding them up there. Jacobs. To Lewis. Lewis gets a kick away close to the boundary line, but there's no one down there for Hawthorne. Not a bad result for them as it bounces out of bounds. Jonathan Hay and Brown off the ground. I think Brown is hurt. Jonathan Hay came off before him and interchanged with Jacobs. Brown, that was a wonderful mark and he's paying the price now. Well, Jacobs has actually been, for a poor afternoon, he's been pretty important since he's come on in the last six or seven minutes. Shirley did brilliantly to McLeod. He unloads with a very long kick down towards right half forward. Almost a clever mark in front there to rough it. He was held without it. He'll get the free. Now this is the kind of experience a young player needs. In the heat of battle when it's the game's still hot and the game's still on. This is when you really learn about footy for Ruffhead. Road who's tried so hard this afternoon comes out to Crawford. Crawford coming up for his 18th possession. Little chip gets it to Joel Smith. Smith is on the wing. The look away handball to Vandenberg. Goes in short. Now Loney can run at them. He's a long kick. Loney going his third goal. It looks good off the boot. It's true. Oncoming charging player. There's Lewis in midfield. Little chip towards half court. Dixon did the hard work. Got in position A then dropped the mark. Goes back to Sewell. Sewell's been handy in the last couple of minutes to Lewis. Lewis swings it out wide. Crawford right on the 50. 
He's taken the mark, crowd 150, nothing doing. It's a tiny bit of panic in Adelaide at the moment. They just have to hold their middle here, the Crows. Right. Slow the game down, and when they win the ball, then they've got to start, just break. Just break and run forward at all costs. But they just have to slow the game down. You put Jacobs on side on. Crawford. Well, that's a terrible kick. Spilt there by Goodwin. We've got it across to Tawny, who heads for the boundary line, and that is sufficient. Yes, they didn't cope well last week, the Crows. And they're not all that convincing at the moment right here. They lead by 16, and you would think they'll weather the storm, but... Well, they've got 15 in, within 50 metres of their own defensive goal here, Adelaide. So Sam they're Crawford. loading up and saving this game right now. Rather than Prowling, he would have liked that last kick over again. Doughty. McGregor's the target on the wing, can't get there to attempt a mark, out of bounds might be good enough. And the clock will stop. 3 minutes 46 remaining. 16 points the margin, so 3 goals, 4 minutes. That's the experience I was talking about before, 16,287 the attendance. The experience is, you can get out there in a game where your team loses by 8 goals and meekly goes under each week for the likes of Roughhead, Boyle, Franklin, those types of guys, that's ground time. It's not experience. This is experience. Now, Roughhead back there now, they need him to stand up. This is real experience at league footy level. Hudson knocked it down to McLeod. Who else would you go to? Although his handball to Rashido, not so good. Tim Clark got the kick away just in time to Brennan. Takes the mark. Just outside 50, three minutes remaining. Looks for the target. It was Dixon. He couldn't get there. Latson gets back down. He got there first. Henschel caught a little high. Umpire said play on. Ball left behind. Dixon. He can kick them from there. Kicks around the body. Jacobs. No. Oh, Rutten got back. And took a good saving mark for the Crows. That might be the game winner. To Tawny, yes. The Hawks needed that one on the ground, didn't they? A spoil from Jacobs. Here's McLeod. They're much better in the second half. Doughty, a good player all day. Back to McLeod. Walking a little one-two across half back. Now McLeod crisply up towards the wing, and the mark is taken by Riley. So it seems Adelaide, for all our criticisms and nagging in this final term, will improve their record to 10 and 5. Who would have thought it? Dowdy. A lot of the football this afternoon coming up for his 21st possession. Comes back to Hudson. Oh, if you don't buy. He kicks it down towards half forward. Thompson comes with a run. There's an early whistle and it's going to be a Hawthorne free kick. Crow interfered with before the ball arrived. He's a right half back, but now the clock, the enemy of the Hawks insufficient time you'd suggest chips it to Sewell he's had a good last quarter Beauty. Sewell Osman through the corridor chance here for Williams if it sits for him is uh -huh. away it didn't sit for him he's got it caught gave it up the heart tackle laid pretty good tackle too not rewarded gee you're the one that was put on Campbell Brown before oh. I couldn't see any real difference in that no quite right there that was a wonderful effort by Williams a couple of times there. Great tackle. Clark deemed that Hart did not have a prior opportunity. Clock continues to run. Everett palms it down. He's hoping for Williams. Bassett overrunning it slightly. Ladson. And we'll get another bounce, you would think, with about a minute left on the clock. 16 points the margin and it'll be less than a minute by the time this ball is bounced. Alistair Clarkson would be buoyed by this improved last term. Didn't speak much to the players at three-quarter time. Left it to Tom Viney and Damien Hardwick. Just a few closing words from the coach and now the ball is out of bounds. Yeah. That's deliberate, is it? Yeah. Now Hodge has got to take it on himself to kick a banana here. He's going for the pass across the rough head. The rough head will fly from behind and takes a good grab. Well, it's down to 35 seconds and the clock continues to run. Now the umpire has whistled time off now. Oh, oh wow. That is stiff. I mean, you're allowed to swat the ball away on its intended path to a 
It just depends on which day and how they feel. Well, what about Tyson Edwards before? Yeah. He, he didn't, but <laughs> Nathan Bassett did. Yeah. Anyway, Roughhead's got the football. We're down to 25 seconds. Margin 16 points. This makes it 10. I don't think it's doable, but gee, they've tried hard. It does make you wonder where they go in quarters two and three. That, once again, you can put it down to the immature bodies. I mean, this kid's a big kid, but can he play pure game time of 80 minutes footy? He's probably a bit young yet. There's a lot of rest on the bench. He's capable of that. is not that a bad day? Now, this is, I keep going back to it. This is the type of experience they need. Loney's peeled off and he's out the back door on the half forward flank here, about 45 metres out of the centre square here. And he is yelling to his teammates, if you win it, come to my flank. And they're just rolling the dice here, the Hawks. <laughs> if, uh, if they win it, they'll get a goal if they come out of this flank. Ten points to the margin. They needed an instant clearance then and even that probably wouldn't have been enough to give them a chance. Matna, and he winds down some seconds as good as anything. Kick to half forward, ball to the back of the pack. Rough head. Siren, 10-point victory to the Adelaide Crows. You can't say they did it in style, but they continue this stylish season. It's their best start to a season ever, and they've grabbed themselves outright second spot on the AFL ladder. Well, they do. They go to second position on the ladder. They've cleared there by four points. But in the last two weeks for a team led by Ian Craig, who's magnificent at getting them up physically Neil. against younger, inexperienced teams who have a bit of foot speed and leg speed, they've been run over in the last quarter. They got one goal in the last quarter against Fremantle last week, Dylan, and none this afternoon. And, Interesting. And to be totally honest, Hawthorne is the... They use the ball worst of any team in the league. They hit the least amount of targets. They're down around, I think it's mid-70s is their uh, efficiency rate. Had they hit a few more targets going forward, they were in trouble, Adelaide. Let's go down to Michael Roberts. Thanks, Term. I've got Kenny McGregor here, and, gee, your third quarter was outstanding. Five goals in eight minutes, an eight-goal term, and then you've got a very, very strong message from the coach not to fade, but you've let yourselves down and let him down. Yeah, it's, uh, it's two weeks in a row, and we're all very happy with that because it's something we talked about during the week, and we knew we didn't want to do it, but we came out there and obviously we haven't found the answer yet. Yeah, well, he gave you a bake last week and you're probably going to get one when you go in there. It's uh, pretty disappointing. Yeah, it's very disappointing. It almost doesn't feel like a win when you go off in a situation like that, but we got the four points and we've got to keep working on it. We're not going to give in. We're going to keep looking at what, what's happening and try and fix it. You can query Hawthorne. Is it a psychological thing that uh, they let you back into the game in that third quarter, but then is it a mental thing to, to let Hawthorne back in this last term? Yeah, definitely. We, we just stopped running and stopped attacking him. I think we just tried to play safe and not take any risks, and that's what hurt us in the end in that last quarter. The positive thing, though, is the fact that you've won and you're outright second. Yeah, it is. I mean, we're still up there and we're still playing some pretty good footy when, when we put our minds to it. we just got to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Well, for three quarters, you did pretty well across half forward. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Cheers. Thanks, Robo. Thank you to Ken McGregor there for taking time out after the win there. He played a blinder. Yeah. He was fantastic today. He gave them a target up forward. He led up to the ball carrier. I mean, every forward line has to have at least two forwards, one who can sit inside forward 50 and win contested ball, and the other must meet the ball carriers out of the midfield. Ken McGregor today they led up and met the ball carriers and he just took, what, what did he get, 13, 14 marks 13, for the day? 13. Yeah. He was super. Sam Mitchell on the bench. You just wonder about the mindset though of the Hawks to come out and immediately after halftime concede five goals in eight minutes. On a low scoring day, you've got to say, what, we had 22 goals kicked all afternoon. They were on their heels, they were behind their men on the defensive lines. I mean, quick getaways out of the centre by Adelaide suddenly resulted in goals yeah. every one of them in that eight minutes and you just wonder where their heads were after halftime. Sometimes teams go in at halftime thinking, well, that was a terrific half. It wasn't a terrific half, but at least they led. And when they come out and do that, they just shot themselves in the foot. As Robbo said, five goals in, what, eight minutes or so in that yep. third quarter. I would hazard, make a guess that the opening three goals came in the space of about nine possessions. Yeah. Just... One win out of the centre, little handball, kick to the forward line, and a goal resulted. It was taking two, two, well, two of them took two possessions. They were two possession goals, and the other one would have been three or four at best. So they were just quick wins, and that, 
Well, it's almost like Hawthorne got the mentality of, oh, here it comes again, and they die. Until they can regather at three-quarter time and get bunked up by their coaching staff to say, hey, you're a chance. Do this, this, and this. Once again, with a kicking efficiency of 76%, percent, the worst in the league. Had they hit targets, gee, we might be following uh, the other colour jumpers into the rooms here. But they got the win, I'm, I guarantee you. If it gets to grand final day, and they let a team come back into it, but they still win the grand final, they'll feel pretty well, happy about it. themselves. You take the win when they're on offer. But it's a funny competition because I don't think anybody is really afraid of the Crows, if that makes sense. I know what you mean. Get a bit boisterous. Get into it. They've been trying to bunk themselves up now. They, after the, they, they know what's coming. They do those goalposts. <laughs> And Chris Knight stands in the middle there, his first game of footy, and I reckon Neil Craig is pacing around the room, and they know it's coming, the Adelaide Crows. He'll take them behind closed doors and give them a good dressing down, but they got the points. Ten points, in fact, it was the win to the Adelaide Crows. 12-6, 78, Hawthorne, 10-8, 68. Monday, Millionaire is about to get on. Scores here at Aurora Stadium in Launceston. We have the horse going down by 10 points. 10 to 8, 68 to the Adelaide Crows. 12, 6, 78. Strange game to watch at times, and it did ebb and flow. Kim McGregor, two goals. Burton, two. Henschel, two. And Goodwin played a good game for the Adelaide Crows, two as well. Nathan Loney, the surprise leading goal kicker for Hawthorne. Mark Williams, able to add two late. And Lekas kicked two goals as well. But it was only a 10-point margin in the end and they're lucky to get away with it the second team on the ladder yeah they were they were well they were clearly the best team uh, on the ground in the third quarter that's when they yeah. set up their win with eight goals so we'll have their captain mark rusciuto the roo he's down there with michael roberts in the winning rooms mark uh, the positive thing is you won the game and uh, you're sitting there in the top four anyway but uh, the fact that you let another side in to fade away in the last quarter pretty disappointing yeah we didn't play well today at all we're very patchy uh, probably only really played one good quarter of footy so uh, something that we talked about during the week and we talked about it again after the game then but uh, we really need to uh, fix up in those areas we've had a bit of luck in getting away with it the last two weeks but we might not have that later on in the year what about uh, you, you called the boys in you asked skipper you had a few words to them before you got in the rooms uh, what was the message there that was just about basically what had happened last week and again this week uh, we improved it in the third quarter this week but we need to do it for four quarters so uh, we've got away with it against Frio and, and Hawthorne but we certainly wouldn't get away with it uh, in the other top sides in the comp Neil was quite strong in his address at three quarter time obviously that message was to kick on and uh, and drill Hawthorne but it didn't eventuate no, it didn't. Uh, the good thing was that we responded at half-time when he asked us to and uh, and really got uh, possession of the ball around the stoppages and uh, that was one of the keys that we had to do today if uh, we were going to beat Hawthorne. Obviously, they got a pretty good uh, set-up in there, so uh, still a good win and uh, we hadn't won down here before, so uh, we'll take it, but we need to improve. Just one last one with the fact that your attacking forwards were the difference in that third quarter and you've you got an outstanding defence, the best in the league. What happens? Is it, a, is it a mental thing, psychological? Do you drift? What, what, what's the go? I wish I knew, Michael. <laughs> That'd be handy if we did. But uh, no, generally, you just got to play four quarters of footy, and uh, and you need a majority of the players doing that. If you haven't got that, uh, that's when you play patchy footy. So uh, we just got to keep working on that at training on, on uh, Wednesdays when we do our harder sessions and uh, make sure that we can concentrate for uh, two hours. Well, good hit and run down here. Well done, Mark. Good, good luck in the rest of the season, Thanks, Michael. Thanks, mate. Thank it might not such a, be such a bad thing that they're playing so many close games. They've had six of their games this year decided by 10 points or less, which means, OK, the leading opposition teams get close to them, but they're also getting good experience in tight games, and they're going to have tight games in the finals. Oh, there's no doubt about that. The one thing that would concern me for Adelaide is yeah. they allow opposition team players, um, prime movers, midfielders, to get into space yeah. late in the game. They don't run them down. They actually drift into their own back line and mm. set up a zone rather than pressure the ball carrier. We yeah. saw Hawthorne, like last week with the Dockers, get the ball in space, 
And where Hawthorne are under pressure, they don't execute all that well. But mm. they did in the last quarter because they were given so much space. That's a concern. And they are a fit team, Adelaide. It's yeah. got to be where they switch off mentally. So I'm quite sure that uh, Neil Craig will try and rectify that. But they've got some great players still. And I think at crucial times of games, when it is tight, they've got the players with the kind of experience to get yep. them home. Uh, and uh, McLeod is one of those yeah. types of players. Another bloke who is one of those types of players. A lot of experience, over 200 games now, is Tyson Edwards. And we've given Robbo the task of hunting him down. You're down there again, Robbo? Looking at it, uh, it's pretty impressive. Ten wins and five losses and the Bulldogs next week. Uh, it's all pretty good for the Crows. Yeah, look, it's a very good position to be in, obviously. And uh, no, we're wrapped to come down here this week and, and uh, get the win. We didn't quite finish off again. Um, in that last quarter, like, uh, like we wanted to. It was a bit better than last week, but um, there's obviously certain improvement still to go there. Well, the coach is trying to find out about it, and the, the skipper's had a word to you coming off the ground. Can you put a finger on it? What, what, why do you psychologically fade in this last fortnight? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I mean, last week um, we just stopped playing the, the type of footy that we wanted to play. We stopped running, um, and you know, the scoreboard showed in the result. Um, this week we started off a bit better in that last quarter, but um, I don't know whether Hawthorne just picked up the pace a bit and and uh, we weren't able to match them. Uh, you know, they got a fair bit of easy ball coming in their forward line. So, uh, no, it's certainly something to look at And uh, this week at training. Well, you didn't score. and that, They've kicked five in that last turn. Yeah, I think we uh, we got a ball into the forward line, but uh, probably not deep enough. Um, you know, sort of sitting around centre four, and it's uh, hard to get easy shots on goal from there. So, um, yeah, it's certainly something to work on. You know you can turn it on because you showed brilliant teamwork in that third term. To, to be behind at half-time and come out and show what you can really do, you're a top side. Yeah, that's right. That, I mean, that's that's the type of footy that we want to play, and um, you know we pride ourselves on, and um, you know our contested ball is a bit better in that quarter, and uh, you know when you're winning the hard ball, it, it uh, certainly opens the game up for you. So, you know that's that's what we uh, concentrate on, and um, you know, I'm not sure what it was in the last quarter. Maybe that was the problem again. Thanks, Tyson. No worries. Thank you, Robbo. Thank you to Tyson. It was mid 20 possessions yeah. again today. Got plenty of the footy. Composed got off with an out on the bounds uh, delivered as well yeah. at one stage. He was a very clever player. Ken McGregor was fantastic value for the Adelaide Crows. He was. We were talking about it last week, how he's played 106 games now, Ken McGregor, and yet he's only ever got one Brownlow vote for his entire career. You would have thought today the umpires might have given him a three or a two, Dermot. Well, they might figure in my votes, you know, if not for anything else, but for the one uh, Epstein hairdo. <laughs> A bit of welcome back, McGregor. <laughs> he was fantastic. As you look at all the really good teams in the comp or over history, they're two key forwards that they go to. One stays at home, as I said, is a contested mark, and the other leads up at the football carrier, and that being the midfielder. Ken McGregor did that today, 13 marks and 22 disposals, two goals. I thought he was the one who broke up Hawthorne yeah. when they were carrying the ball forward Adelaide. He just broke Hawthorne up by running up into the traffic mm. and meeting the footy. It's having a very good season, and oh, especially with is. Scott Welsh not there, they needed someone to mark the ball well, inside Brett, 50. Brett Burton can mark the ball as yeah. well, and he was uh, fantastic today. We've given Robbo a few tasks down there. He's now tracked down the bird man, Brett Burton. Well, Brett, a uh, couple of good grabs, a couple of goals yourself, but, uh, gee, it almost wasn't enough in that last term. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, a bit the same as last week. We didn't finish the, the game off, and uh, we spoke about that three-quarter time, and I uh, you know, really wanted to finish off the last quarter, but unfortunately didn't do it. You know, we probably could have kicked a couple of goals uh, early on and might have made a, a bit of difference, but um, at least we're getting good at saving games, I suppose. The coach, obviously, is going to have a message for you. Uh, you haven't gone in behind closed doors yet, but I reckon there's a spray coming. Yeah, I reckon it'll probably be much the same as last week. You know, look, um, probably not as big as last week. It's, it's hard, uh, you know, travelling and coming down to Tasmania and it takes a bit out of you sometimes. We were probably a little bit flat today and, and had to work a bit harder than uh, we usually do. It didn't come so easily, but, um, but we still got the four points, so that's the main thing. Gee, you can't sort of have that as an excuse to come down to Tassie, a travel thing. It's, it's got to be in the head, uh, especially, you know, the message was so strong at three-quarter time to fire up. Oh, look, it, there is, you know, we're not going to make an excuse. We'll certainly address it again like we did last week. Um, but, uh, you know, you get the four points, that, that's the main thing, and uh, look, it would have been nice to finish off, we didn't do it today, but uh, we certainly uh, look at that this week and, uh, and see if we can rectify it next week. What's the big positive out of today, the third quarter? Yeah, definitely the third quarter, we've got our game going. Probably the, the biggest positive, I suppose, is um, we had a lot of blokes down today, we we're, were feeling flat, uh, you know, at halftime it was a real struggle, you know, yeah. four well, goals each, each side, and we really had to, to struggle to get ourselves going, and we did that in the third quarter, so that was a positive. Good luck with the run home in the finals. No worries, thanks, Mick. Thanks, Oh, we just have a look, Dwayne and I have a look at the back of the shot there, and the boys downstairs, we might just get a shot of that back up again. Neil Craig just yeah. standing in the background, making sure every player in the room could see him, standing there, 
with his mouth shut and just standing there like that. He was observing. And he was observing. He yeah. was letting the boys know it's coming. <laughs> it is coming. One thing that did come in the third quarter, they kicked eight goals. Five in eight minutes, in fact. These are their second half goals because they didn't get one in the last quarter, but they won the ball out of the centre. There's one kick. Second disposal. And a mark, so it takes three disposals So after Thompson kicks this goal. Three disposals for that first goal. And... And there were two others in the opening couple of goals, uh, three goals, that were only two disposal goals. A kick out of centre and a goal. Like that. So they had three goals in seven possessions. They would not have won the game without this seven or eight minute burst. And that yep. was the difference. Hawthorne were not only down, but Adelaide picked up their rate. And the good part about them, I suppose, Adelaide, is that they know that they can put on a spurt like this with guys like McLeod in the middle. Goodwin, Rashido, they've got some great Ruckman as well who can get it down to them. Against the best midfield in the comp, if you look at how many clearances Everett has teamed up with Mitchell and Crawford with, and they're still able to take the ball away for this seven minutes and get goals straight away from it. Oh, they were superb in that, uh, in that seven, eight minutes. And once again, Tawny, mm. he had three times where he was the last player to kick the ball to somebody who ended up kicking the goal. Yeah. Now, I know stats can mean certain things, but that is, a, is too frequent and too often to suggest that there's not something in it. So that's, I mean, he's a very good goal assist player. Simon Goodwin was magnificent with his foot skills today as well. And Neil Craig can either assess this game and look at it as if the glass was half empty or half full. <laughs> We've just been talking a little bit about how it's half full and that'll yeah. have one, but I think he might go the half empty approach. Oh, definitely. You always... Uh, slap your players mm. around thinking well I need a, a more committed effort next time did you get McGregor in your votes oh did I get him in my votes he, he said he's only got one Brownlow vote in a hundred plus games of league footy well then the Lou Richards medal mm. Whoa! he's is. got eight here eight for K, uh, Ken McGregor he was fantastic today Brett Burton was solid off his wing Angelo Lekas who was good was moved away from him to get into a bit of space Simon Goodwin was fantastic and I thought Trent Crowe's commit, uh, committed effort to the uh, team and his workload and uh, what he did around the ground was fantastic also and here's a look at what a coach with a half empty approach as he sums up the situation looks like because uh, as he was behind <laughs> Neil Craig just with his arms folded there hey, uh, look, look, explain the room so keep this up here for a second the corner of the room uh, as you look at the camera uh, you look at this scene here is basically where the camera is it spreads a bit to the right and then it hooks back in he's in one corner of it and I guarantee <laughs> you everyone in the room can see the coach every player everybody in the room gets a side of that coach and he's just stood there <laughs> making sure that they know it's yeah. coming <laughs> he could play on his day to neil craig and they've got immense respect for him so i'm sure they'll uh, have their ears pricked when he talks to them shortly well robbo is uh, he's down there we're not going down to him just yet after the break we'll come back to him but i reckon robbo will hear him mm. even from outside <laughs> robbo would hear, hear him right now well it's the craze by 10 points we'll be back after the break to wrap up this is sunday football It's on in the Channel 9 car park. Beautifully down to Chad Thornton across to Bickley. Can you believe that? Bix, what you Bickley's kicks a shocker. <laughs> Ross Target beautifully handled by the big man. Oh, the girls are out of Bickley and Ali. What a stouse. Goes to Macken. He goes to Peter. Pan kick a goal. Watch out, Christy. Toyota, the car company that's helping the environment. Join us and Planet Ark by planting a tree on National Tree Day. Toasted subs are here, like the chicken and bacon ransom. Toasted hot, inside and out. 
Subway, eat fresh. Need extra cash to cover this month's bills or extra spending money this weekend? Why not get an instant cash loan against your quality unwanted goods? Cash Converters provides a real alternative. No fuss loans with less hassle and less paperwork. Just show 100 points of ID to the friendly Cash Converters loan staff and you'll be on your way with convenient instant cash. Instant cash loans at Cash Converters. Just another reason to visit your nearest Cash Converters store. Cash Converters! Here's a wingnut come up to the idea coming over here. Oh, yes. Sparkles back there. Hang on, boys. Oh, you're okay. You're the biggest whinger I've ever heard in your life. Well, you didn't wait. Great idea to come out of here, Sparkle. Stop your whinging. That's it, boys. We're going back to Vic. They bought it! When you live in a dry state on Earth, you don't want anyone else drinking your beer. West End Draft. We'll be back in a moment. At 14.990, drive away. There's never... The fully loaded five-door Kia Rio is now just $14,990 drive away, so it's never been easier to buy a new car. Kia! So you talk to Sydney for a quake. Brisbane to put a claim in. Then Melbourne to get them to pay it. I don't know what state my insurance is in, Trev. I don't. Help me. <laughs> Sunday football from Aurora Stadium has been completed. It's the Adelaide Crows by 10 points, 12, 6, 78 to Hawthorne, 10, 8, 68. Let's go down to the roof now. Michael Roberts is with the Adelaide coach, Neil Craig. Thanks, Tim. I tell you what, it takes a lot of courage to be standing right in the warm-up of uh, the Adelaide boys. They've just come out with uh, Craigie here, and um, the mortar hasn't fallen out of the bricks, but I reckon you would have had a bit of a stern word with them, seeing as you faded again in this, uh, well, two weeks in a row. Yeah, no, 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 the mortar hasn't come out at all, Mike. I mean, it's uh, just, we just got to uh, look at it again and, and make sure that, you know, we, uh, we're quite analytical and, and rational about the whole thing. Don't underestimate the opposition. Yeah. Don't underestimate the opposition. Their ability to run the ball... Um, when they get going, is as good as any in the competition. So uh, we recognise that we're also playing against a side that's, you know, didn't have much to lose in real terms, and they're always dangerous to play against. So uh, that's not that's not to say that we're happy with our last quarter. But Neil, you, you proved in that third term you are a top side and you can turn it on. And then just to go into a huddle and come out and uh, well, Hawthorne kicked five goals in the last term. Yeah, no, I think uh, the positive out of it is that uh, their their first quarter was was very good our ability to get back in the game in the second quarter and our ability to, to give ourselves a five or six goal lead at three quarter time, that needs to be recognised as well, um, just as the last quarter needs to be recognised. What was your focus in there, just quickly? I was just more interested to, think what, uh, to get some information from the players. I'm interested in what they think, uh, rather than the coach telling them all the time. They're out there playing it, so uh, they are our most important resource. So, I mean, obviously the coach will have an input as well, but I was just keen to see what they thought. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for your time. Good on you. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you, Robbo, and thank you to Neil Craig. That is fantastic that he's given up his time. Yeah. There's no doubt he was angry with his team. But it was good to see him calm about it. Absolutely. Well, it was the Crows by 10 points here today. That has been Sunday Football, the Crows by 10.